Hello, everyone. Uh, as Ray mentioned last week, we're addressing various topics as they relate to these extraordinary times in which we're living. For the, the topic for this week is discipleship, or to frame that as a question, how are we as Christians to be walking as followers of Christ, as his disciples, during the coronavirus? Uh, let me mention two brief points. Uh, first, as uh, followers of Christ, let's seek to fight fear with faith. Uh, I know there's a lot of fear around the coronavirus, and the more it spreads, the more fearful we can become. But remember that the disciples were, no, were not strangers to fear themselves. In fact, uh, Jesus often told them not to fear. For example, in Matthew 8, we read in verse 23, And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, for we're perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there arose a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this that even winds and sea obey him? So what caused the disciples to be so afraid? Well, it was their lack of faith in Jesus and who he was ultimately. They had seen him perform miracles of healing, uh, but didn't know that he was God the Son, the creator of all things, who, who could easily calm the storm. We need to remind ourselves uh, who our God is and that he's not asleep at the wheel. Uh, he's sovereign and doing something of a global nature that, if truth be told, it should excite us. Instead of looking at the waves, being afraid of uh, the, the news that we hear, fearful statistics that we're hearing, we need to remember that Jesus is unchanging. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We need to remember his promises. In him, all things hold together, and he's promised to never leave or forsake us, that nothing can separate us from his love for us in Christ, and that that he will complete the work that he has promised, that he has started in us. There's no reason to fear. The, um, now, I must say, these promises and others, aren't, aren't they more sweet to us because of the coronavirus these days? Or, as Peter says, they're precious and magnificent. But aren't they even more so? Don't they seem that way to us now? For example, consider Philippians 4, 6, and 7 in light of COVID-19. Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Fear and anxiety over the coronavirus uh, should be gracious reminders to us to pray so that we will experience that really tangible, real peace of God that he promises. Um, and it is beyond understanding, both ours as well as people around us. Or consider 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties on him for he cares for you. May we cast and leave these anxieties on him at his feet because he cares for us. That's the reason. Take a moment just to meditate on that truth that Christ cares for you individually, the creator of the universe. This, uh, how incredible and true and reliable that is for us. So first, as followers of Christ, may we fight fear with faith, a faith that is based on the character of a God and based on these precious, these and many other precious and magnificent promises. But second, as followers of Christ, let's embrace this time to be salt and light. The early church was no stranger to pandemics. In fact, um, it may surprise you to know that according to uh, both Christian and non-Christian sources, one of the main catalysts for Christian growth were these pandemics. In 362, Julian, the emperor of the Roman Empire at the time, complained that the Hellenist needed to match the Christians in virtue blaming the recent growth on Christianity on, quote, benevolence to strangers, their care for the graves of the dead, and the pretended holiness of their lives. And he also wrote later that it's a disgrace that 
the impious Galileans or Christians support not only their, their own poor, but ours as well. And from a Christian source, Dionysius, the early church father, said of the pandemic of his day, quote, most of our brother Christians showed unbounded love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another. Heedless of the danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ and with them departed this life serenely happy. For they were infected by others with the disease, drawing on themselves the sickness of their neighbors and cheerfully accepting their pains. And while in the middle, uh, still in the middle of this pandemic, he, he wrote, far from being a time of distress, it is a time of unimaginable joy. Now, to be clear, Dionysius wasn't celebrating the death and suffering that accompany pandemics. Uh, but he was rejoicing in the opportunity that these pandemics brought to give them for testing the genuineness of their faith and to go out of their way to love and to, to, to serve their neighbors and spreading the gospel in both word and deed during that time. In a word, the Christians of, were markedly different during the pandemics from their neighbors. The form the focus of non-believers was, self, was self-preservation. The focus of, belie- of believers was serving others. Now, I'm certainly not saying that we should blindly put ourselves at risk. Please don't hear me say that. But, but neither should we be saddled with fear, aiming at self-preservation. Instead, may we display the fruit of the Spirit, love for neighbor, joy in knowing our Creator, peace that surpasses understanding, a patience in being, even in being housebound, a kindness to those in need, a goodness as good as our God is good, a gentleness with others, and a self-control even in fearful times. Against such things there is no law and may I add no ordinance either. So what are some practical takeaways given, especially given the current shelter in place orders? Uh, Four, four takeaways. First, let's pray. Cast your anxieties on him and leave them there, for he does care for you. And ask God to give you a genuine concern for your neighbor. Provide opportunities to serve and give wisdom on exactly how to safely and effectively serve. Second, go. Take walks in the neighborhood uh, while still uh, respecting the social distancing guidelines. Uh, I've spoken to, uh, people are more open to talk than ever, and I've spoken with several folks who have already, have already been experiencing this, having great opportunities. Ask questions like, are you finding everything you need uh, in the store? Be willing to share if you hear of a need that you can meet. Uh, write a note, leave it on a door or in a mailbox of a neighbor offering to pick up groceries or to help us need it. Contact the church office about helping the refugees at Sandy Forks, either individually or as a care group. Several care groups are already doing this. Uh, Third, connect. Call or video conference with believers and non-believers. Ask ask questions uh, that that reveal asking about their needs. And if you're already, uh, if you're not already meeting online, please uh, contact Daniel Harmon for a way to do that for fellowship. And fourth and last uh, report, you know, we it, let the staff or an elder know of any needs that you have. We would love to know that. We're, we're trying to call everyone, but we would welcome you reaching out to us. Please do that. We are a family. So may God enable us to walk in faith, to be salt and light uh, more than ever, especially during this time. Would you pray with me? Father, we are grateful to you for your care and concern for us that you do individually care for us. I pray for that we would be able to leave anxieties at your feet. Lord, would you enable us to be salt and light as you call us effectively to others serving? Would you give us wisdom that you promised to give liberally? And Lord, would you be glorified in and through your church as you promised to be? We thank you for your faithfulness and your sovereignty in all of this. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.